Alright, so in this video, I'm going to go over how you can handle collisions in Unity. And I have a volunteer here named Millie. This is Millie right here. And Millie is willing to volunteer and help with the demonstration of uh, handling collisions. So for the first example, we're going to go over three functions, which is on collision enter, on collision stay, and on collision exit. So here I have a jump pad, a jump pad over here. And I want to make it to where whenever Millie steps on the jump pad object here, he is going to jump, jump up high into the sky. So I already have a jump pad script attached, and in here, it's empty. And to make it to where I have Millie jump high into the sky anytime Millie touches the jump pad, what I use is void on collision enter. And on collision enter happens as soon as an object uh, collides with the object that has this function with it. So anytime Millie touches this jump pad, the first, like the frame they touch the jump pad, then on collision enter will be called. So with on collision enter, I can have Millie jump high into the sky. And with this argument here, that is given the type of collision, this has access to the rigid body of the other object that hit this object. So uh, Millie uh, touches this jump pad, if Millie touches this jump pad, then in the collision argument here, uh, Millie's rigid body will be within here. So I can do collision dot rigid body dot add force, and I can do a force of vector three dot up, multiply it by ten, force mode dot impulse, and there you go. So whenever Millie touches this object, the on collision enter function will call. And in this function, we will have Millie uh, be launched into the air. So now if I go back into Unity and I hit play, and Millie walks over this jump pad, there you go. He goes flying. All right, so to demonstrate on collision stay and on collision exit, um, let's say I uh, Millie, whenever he touches the jump pad, he doesn't instantly fly into the air. It's whenever he presses the space bar or he manually jumps, that's when he uh, flies into the sky. So in here, uh, what we can do is we can create another function, private void on collision stay and private void on collision exit. On collision exit is the frame where um, the other object leaves uh, like stops touching the main object and on collision stay is called every frame for when the other object is uh, Still touching the target object that has the class with the function So what we can do is in our movement class here We can create a public field that can be accessed by our jump pad So we can do public bool touching jump pad and in our jump pad class as soon as on collision enter is called, what we can do is get the movement um, component from M Millie here. We can do collision dot collider dot game object dot get component movement dot touching jump pad equals true. And in our on collision exit, we can just set this to false. And now in our on collision stay method, what we can do is anytime uh, Millie here presses the space bar, we can have this on collision stay function override the jump force. So what we can do here is change the jump force so we can make our jump force here public, public float jump force. And for in our on collision stay, what we can do is have a reference to our movement class of Millie. So movement, call this milli movement, and we can have milli movement. We can initialize it in our on collision enter, and we can set it to null right after. And in our on collision stay, we can set the jump force dot jump force equals ten, and we can set it to back to its default which was 5 there so oh yeah and we can set touching jump pad to true in here 
there. And now, if we go back into Unity and we hit play and we go over the jump pad, we're not going to um, instantly jump into the sky. But if I go into our player here and try to change the jump force, it won't change because it's being changed every frame our game object is touching our jump pad. So now if I hit space here, as soon as I get off, you can see my jump force reset and touching jump pad go to false. So on collision enter runs, it sets our touching jump pad to true and it gets the component of Millie's movement class and in the on collision stay for every frame that Millie keeps touching the jump pad, it will set the jump force to 10 so it will not be able to be overwritten by any other external force and we and every time we press space it sets the touching jump pad to false and resets the jump force to its default value of 5. And that is how you handle uh, collisions with on collision enter, on collision stay, and on collision exit. Alright so handling trigger colliders are generally like the same as handling collisions but this time our collider is set to is trigger and whenever we walk into our cube with is trigger set to true you notice that uh, our player Millie here won't be able to actually collide with the cube and that's because it is set to as a trigger as we walk into it it's it's like think of it as a virtual tripwire right as soon as you go into the tripwire then some sort of functionality will happen and the functionality that will happen is going to happen within the on trigger functions so on this trigger cube here with the trigger collider enabled I have a trigger enter class and if I attach it and edit it and I get rid of the start and update method here I can put in a void called on trigger enter and this is called whenever a an object enters the the trigger boundary set by our box collider here with as it is set to is trigger so with on trigger enter if I debug dot log other dot collider or other dot game object yeah in on trigger enters and on trigger functions instead of a collision a class that is passed through as an argument it's a collider class so you don't have to actually do um, collision a collider it's just the collider is given straight to you so I can do other dot game object dot name and anytime I enter this little tripwire field this little boundary, you'll notice in the console that when I walk in here, you'll see that it will say Millie's name. Every and this is every time I enter the the little trigger field. And if I private void on trigger exit, I can have it debug log the name again. But this time I can do plus and say has left the Trig uh, has left the yeah trigger collider field there. So anytime I hit play, I go into the collider. It will uh, debug dot log Millie's name because I just entered it. And every time I leave it, you'll notice that it says Millie has left the trigger collider field. There you go. And with on trigger stay. This is for when Millie is still within the trigger collider for every frame. So for every frame, Millie here is within the collider. The on trigger stay function will run every frame for every frame that Millie is within the trigger collider. So this is using this is very useful as you can uh, create like um, like poison gas in games. You can create things like that. You can make things that slow down the player, maybe even add an effect to the player, like for example a healing aura. But for this example I'm going to slowly decrease the player's speed over time. So what I'm going to do here is make the speed variable here public. And then our trigger enter here, I'm going to get rid of these debug logs. And on top I'm going to create a reference to the movement class for on Millie. I'll call this Millie movement once again. And as soon as Millie enters, we can do Millie movement equals other game object I'll get component movement. Don't judge why it's named movement, alright? 
and I can set it to null as on trigger exit is called. Now in on trigger stay, what I can do is subtract milli speed by time dot delta time. So I can do uh, milli movement dot speed minus equals time dot delta time, and I can clamp it so I can just prevent the speed from going negative. So I can do equals mathf dot clamp. Uh, the value would be milli movement dot speed. And the minimum, I'd say I'd set the minimum to like one, and the maximum to maybe five. And on the on trigger exit, I can reset the speed to its default, which I believe was four equals four f, and I set it to null. And there you go. So now we have a a trigger box that decreases the speed of any game object with a movement class attached to it. So now if I hit play, and I quickly focus on the movement class there, as soon as I walk in here, you notice the speed slowly decreasing over time, and Millie is now at a speed of 1. But as soon as I leave, there you go, it resets back. Anytime I enter, I slow down, and it resets as soon as I leave. And there you go. That is how you handle collisions in Unity with trigger colliders and regular colliders. If you learn something new, like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video or tutorial series. Goodbye.